Well, a couple of weeks ago, I was in a very busy place when a bold message warmed my heart. The woman's bright red t-shirt proclaimed, God is crazy about you. What do you believe about yourself and your creator? You may not be what you think, but what you think you are. Debbie Lindell wrestled to believe she has value. She believes and she wants you to embrace the life you were created to live. It is a joy to welcome a woman who doesn't know anything about performance pressure. Your husband pastors a church of um, 14,000 in Springfield, Missouri. That's right. 14, For how many years? Weekly. Um, this is our 25th year. Wow. So it's a banner year. We're excited. We're as excited as ever about the ministry and what God's doing. Fantastic. You know, I we just heard Tony Evans talk about not devaluing the person. I, I know you don't mind me going to one of the early stories in your journey. Yeah. Your first job interview? Yes, uh, John and I were 20 years old and we were invited to um, interview with a pastor at a church in the area uh, as possibly coming on staff. And he met us at a restaurant and I was so nervous. I was very insecure. I didn't have a good um, perception of myself as a person. Didn't feel I had a lot to offer and was like, you know, John is so amazing. You know, when you're first married, you're just like it's so proud hero. of your husband <laughs> and uh, hopefully even later in life too. But anyway, we were sitting there and after an hour interview, he, the pastor never looked at me directly until the end. And at the close of it, he said, oh, John, you have interviewed so well today. He said, I just love the answers to the questions that you've given me. And he said, on a scale of one to 10, I would rate you as a 10. And I was like, that's right. You know, I was thinking, cheering him on from the inside, not saying a thing, because I was so shy. And then he turned to me, the pastor did, and he said, but I have to, he didn't even speak to me. He spoke to John looking at me. He said, I, I would have to rate your wife as a four on a scale of one to 10. And I remember thinking in that moment, how does he know? I, I, I've just met him. How does he know that I am not, uh, I do not have a lot to offer the he ministry? He actually said you would be a liability to your husband's ministry. He did, he did. And I believed it. You know, I, I was not in a place where I understood what God's word said about me. I'd heard the truth, but I hadn't come to believe it for myself. But it was really, um, it began to be a, a starting um, a moment of a turning point in my life with regards to what am I gonna believe about what God says about me? And it took years before I really fully embraced the truth of God's word. You know, Dr. Phil, I don't regularly watch Dr. Phil, but I will never forget him saying, you can tell people who live within their labels yeah. because they lack passion. That's right. And that was the enemy's goal, wasn't it? The, well, the, the accuser, the father right. lies. It's the enemy's goal for every human being. Um, the book is obviously written t to women, but I believe men struggle the same um, with regards to just accepting who God created them to believe and believing it's enough. And actually not just believing it's enough, but it's altogether amazing, their creation. Um, and so I, I do really believe that the enemy wants to thwart the plan in every girl's life. And he'll use a person like he did in this instance to try to reinforce the lies of the, his, his lies, um, but he'll use anything. 13 years ago, you were ignited by a conference yes. and a message, your life is a gift, unwrap it. Yes. Yes, I was, um, John and I have been leading um, in this, uh, at James River for several years. And at that, in that year, God began to stir in my heart to lead at a different level. And it was during, right before attending this event that you're talking about, that God really set me free um, from just my feeling of inadequacy as a person and as a leader. Mm -hmm. um, but that freedom came from me choosing to walk by faith. And so in that year, as I stepped out in faith to believe that God wanted to use me at a whole nother le level in leadership, and he began to transform my view of myself. And through, you struggled with things that many women do, just body image and- Oh yes, just, all those things. N those normal little things that Well, looking in the mirror confidence. and just really uh, struggling to believe that you're beautiful. And here's the deal. I really encourage girls to change their perspective when they look in the mirror. To, to look at themselves as a creation of God. that Because when, when they tear themselves down, 
You know, really, they're dishonoring the creator of the universe who, who designed them intentionally. Every body part, every aspect of their emotions, their, their intellect, their personality was perfectly, intricately woven together by God. It's amazing to think that. But when you look in the mirror and say, God, oh my goodness, you created that. Mm -hmm. You know, to challenge a girl to look at the mirror and say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made and praise God for what they see. And when I started to do that, it changed, it, changed everything about my life. The dedication of your book, To My Heavenly Father, Believing What You Say About Me, changed everything about my Such life. I, I, I think my favorite takeaway from your, your very full story is the d delicious scriptures <laughs> oh, in, in the message translation, the New Living Translation, yeah. my personal favorite, you know, which brings them alive in a new way and the literal power yeah to change how you saw yourself. That's right. It's it all was in, the biggest factor. It's the what we God. believe. It's what we believe. And one, there's a verse in Ephesians 1. It says, it's in Christ that once you understood the truth and believed it, found yourself home free. I love that verse. Home free. Because so many of us know the word of God, mm -hmm. but we're not believing it for ourselves. Debbie, I'm going to have another one up here because it's just worth soaking it up. And this is uh, the message translation, Psalm 37, verses 5 and 6. Open up before God. This is what you did. Yeah. Open up before God. Keep nothing back. He'll do whatever needs to be done. He'll validate your life in the clear light of day and stamp you with approval at high noon. Isn't that awesome? I love that. God so values every girl. You know, every girl's a 10 with regards to their worth in Christ. And once we believe it, it does, it truly does change everything about how we live. It changes how we view our past, mm -hmm. not as a liability, but almost as a trampoline for the future and mm -hmm. how God wants to use us. It changes how we walk day to day in life and how we process challenges in life because if we believe we're valuable to God, we know he's gonna care for us. And then it changes how we view our future. I'm <laughs> sure there are women who will relate to the marriage crisis that you cite in your book. Major challenges at the church. I think there was a, an expansion program and you know, your husband was working late under tons of pressure. You actually thought he might be having an affair. I did. Definitely tied at that time to insecurity yeah. in yourself. Yes. Yes. How did God work in that, Debbie? You know, I had to decide. I, I, I share in the book about the moment that I was walking into our home um, one particular night, and I, I was just really dealing with all this battle of just, you know, is our marriage falling apart? Mm -hmm. And, of course, the pressure of just being in the ministry and the spotlight being on us and people looking to us is just the ultimate in having a good marriage. Super and, Christian. I'm like, it's not, you know, it's not what we're presenting. It's not for real. And so as I was walking into the home that night, I felt a little whisper, Debbie, are you going to believe what you believe about me that I can help you with this? Mm -hmm. And so I, I chose to do that through my words. And I started anointing our entire home, like every room, the mirror John looked in in the morning, his shoes, our bed, and just anointing it with oil and praying in faith that with God, all things are possible, <laughs> which is another verse I love about believing God. And so I just was like, God, you're bigger than this problem. You're, you're bigger than the, the attack of the enemy on our lives. Mm -hmm. And it was that night where I said, God, I'm going to believe what your word says about me, about what you say about our marriage, about John, about me personally. I'm going to believe you're going to help us with this. And he, he, he caused a miracle to take place. You doubted yourself on just about every level. But today you're a leader, speaker, author. In 2003, you launched the Design for Life Women's Conference, it draws 10,000 women annually. Uh, God had great things for you once you got past these lies and self-doubting. Yeah. Well, here's what I would say to every girl that's listening today. God has great things for them. And, you know, I, I could have continued to walk in my insecurity and doubt, and I, I don't believe I would be seeing all that he's he's doing in and through my life today. It's by his power and his grace upon me, but it connects to our faith. And girls will tell me, oh, I don't know if I have enough faith. Mm -hmm. Here's the deal, if you have faith, the grain of a mustard seed, mm -hmm. you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, the word of God says. And you know, I would say to that girl today, use the faith you have. 
Use the faith you have to start walking in God's will for you and his purpose for your life. And this has not been a cakewalk just because you've made the conquest. Um, tests come, yeah. cancer diagnosis. You yeah. say that a double mastectomy wasn't the toughest part no. of that journey. No. No, um, actually, my diagnosis came two weeks after I signed the contract for the book, which um, I believe was an attack from the enemy. I just, you know, I think anytime we're trying to put God's word in print, he's going to, the enemy's going to fight us. But when I heard the diagnosis, I was like, okay, God's, uh, God's got, thankfully I was at a place in my walk with God that I could say, I know God's with me. He can heal me or he'll help me walk through this journey. But um, the challenge that I faced was I didn't recover well and I had multiple um, challenges in my recovery. So when the doctor had told me, in two weeks, Debbie, you'll be feeling good, you'll want to go back to work, and that didn't happen mm -hmm. because I'm a doer, I don't like to sit. <laughs> so being in bed for, for months on end was really the, the biggest battle for me. But there's a chapter in the book called Treasures in the Darkness. One of my favorite scriptures. <laughs> God's and, promise. Yeah, and I walked through a dark time, but God revealed himself in so many beautiful ways. And actually two chapters in the book are dedicated to that season that I really believe will encourage girls that are walking through, through a dark time. He's got things for you, baby girl, that he wants to reveal to your life and to yourself and um, just reveal his goodness to you. Um, so I, I'm so thankful looking back now for that season and how God has used it to actually expand the ministry, <laughs> you know, and help me to understand what girls walk through and how I can minister to them in a, in a more effective way. The enemy just has a way of shooting himself he, in the foot, doesn't he? He does. <laughs> you know, uh, I want to say too, I mean, your children are now, I think I wrote it down, you're 30, 32, 31, and 30. Yes. But just those numbers will tell our viewers that you had three in diapers. We you did, did that stage. <laughs> and we oh, survived. <laughs> and we survived, indeed. Yes. I had two, you had three. But, you know, you had it done all at once. But yeah. uh, times of intensity, God's word being the strength, the, the so reality true. check you need, so whatever true. you're going through. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your time in God's word. Clearly, extra time to find the most delicious translations. Wow. It's Thank been you, a treat. I, I agree with one of Debbie's friends. Nothing has been said or done to you or against you that is greater than what Jesus has done for you. Jesus' words, I want you to see them. This is Matthew 5, verse 8 from the Message Translation. You're blessed when you get your inside world, your mind and heart put right. Then you can see God in the outside world. Let us help you in that vital process today. Our prayer lines are always available. You can call right now and get a different outlook on your day, on your forever. And here is a great journey you can share with Debbie Lindell. She believes she wants you to as well.